tell me a little bit about um, how your practice has evolved from a, a marketing standpoint, a positioning standpoint first, because I think in the PI space specifically, it's just so saturated. It, it's, there's just so many attorneys and you need a, need a method to stand out. Yeah, I mean, so kind of answering part of your last question as well and this question is when we started the firm, we kind of did a little bit of everything just because, you know, when you start a new business, it's kind of like, how am I going to pay the bills? Like, how do I make this work from a financial standpoint? So we took a lot of different cases from several different practice areas just because it was kind of the necessity of this is how you know we have to support ourselves and our families. Um, but slowly or not slowly, but shortly thereafter, we realized, kind of like you said, you, you have to niche down. You have to pick you know, one practice area, and then when, within that, you can even niche down further. Um, Mark and I were both very good at personal injury. We enjoyed it. We understood it. We had some really good success with it early on. So we're like, you know what? We can help a lot of people. We can do a lot of good for ourselves and our families. Let's, let's stick with personal injury. But kind of like you said, I mean, there's thousands of other personal injury attorneys in just the state of Georgia probably. So there, there's no shortage of selection when it comes to you know, someone that's injured in a car accident or slip and fall or dog bite or whatever. You know, they, they've got a lot of different options. So even within the field of personal injury, we're like, well, we kind of need to pick an area where we want to focus. And we definitely have done that because we don't really have a lot of competition in our new market share that we're in. Um, in the personal injury field, there's two types of cases. You have your pre-litigation cases, which is are you know your cases that originate. Somebody was injured in an accident. They need a doctor. They need an attorney. They need somebody to handle the case, and that attorney is going to you know get them through the initial process. And probably 85% of the time, they're going to negotiate a successful settlement and not need to file a lawsuit. Then there's another portion of cases where those cases need litigation, and the example that I kind of use is it's kind of like football and baseball. You, you can't play baseball with a football team and you can't play football with a baseball team. You can have two you know, highly skilled sets of professionals on both sides, but just because you're a professional with one side of things does not mean you're a professional on the other. And the law firms that we found that we work with that are very good at pre-lit, they need to stay good at pre-lit because you really can't do both with the same team. So what we found is, well, there's a whole side over here in litigation that no one really wants to be in that space because the margins are phenomenal in pre-lit. So we decided, well, if we can grab a large portion of the market share and we have experience, we're really good, we have a solid track record of processes and procedures and you know, running a business model in the litigation space, why don't we just go all in on litigation? And that's that's exactly what we've done. You know, we are we are in the business of helping other personal injury lawyers make more money faster and with less stress by operating as their outsourced litigation department. I love that positioning, first of all, and and I think you've articulated what I've heard. I, I see so many, even of our own clients, they'll have you'll have the pre lit, the you know, they have the negative names, the settlement mills, and you know, there's a lot of negative connotations, but um, there's a model that works. It's very productized and it's good for cash flow. Um, and then you have the, the litigation personally, I've never seen like, I, and I'm agreeing, I've never seen it work where they did both successfully. You know, why do you, why do you think that is? Is it, is it because on the, you know, the settlement side, you're, you're marketing more the consumer and maybe the marketing's adjusted more to the, your peers on the, on the lit side. Like, why do you think that is? Why do you think it's difficult to, to do both, so to speak? And this is just my perspective and opinion on things. But when, when I look at that, I think it really starts with how the firm is run because you effectively have to run two entirely separate law firms. You're running two separate business models that really don't have anything to do with each other. If, if you want to do it well, and there are some that do it very well, but you, you have to have an entirely separate pre-litigation team that is run entirely by a separate, you know, either set of people or individual, and then the same thing for litigation. They don't need to have any overlap. You don't need to have the same manager handling, you know, both. It, it needs to be entirely separate departments that have different SKUs that have different metrics and everything because one has one function and another has another and they, they don't need to you know, cross pollinate so to speak because they're entirely separate. So if you can run 
two separate law firms through one at the same time, and that's what you want to do, then by all means, I think you can do it and you can do it very well. But a lot of the law firms that we service, because currently we work with 17 other law firms across the Southeast. And if you're really good at hustle market sell and you have a marketing machine, you don't need to spend your time with pre or with lit. You need to spend your time in pre lit because if you dump more cash into that cash register and it keeps spitting out, don't waste your time with the significant overhead and training and retraining and expense that's associated with litigation. You know, let me help you make more money and make it faster so you don't have to have that expense and that caseload and that you know cash flow where you can just dump it back into your marketing machine. There's so many so many questions here. Do you do you find though that now it just seems like due to the digital age and how connected we are through mobile, through Slack, through all the CRMs and, and project management tools that the value of being a good litigator is actually increasing because now there's a lot more of these, you know, companies that, that can originate cases that are that are doing the marketing or sales or, or am I off on that? And and maybe there's just still kind of a balance here. I mean, I think it can depend. It really depends on the firm and how they're running and how the insurance company sees them and reviews them and audits their cases. Because, I mean, these insurance companies, they know every single one of us. They have so much data on all of us that we don't even really comprehend it. So, I mean, they're tracking all of this stuff. But at the same time, I mean, if if you have a pre-lit department that's working very well, that's getting good results, where the clients are happy, because really that at the end of the day, that's what matters. We, we are serving the clients. And if the clients are happy where, you know, they may be getting a little bit less than they would in litigation, but then you're thinking of, well, when you go to litigation, there's increased fees, there's increased costs, there's increased time. You know, there's a lot of factors that you have to consider as well from a client's perspective of, is this worth it to, gamble with my money because in pre-lit, the money's certain. You know exactly what you're walking away with because we, we can run the numbers. Whereas in lit, you're, you're chasing something. Everybody's a little bit different, but a lot of people you know fall into the conservative category if they would rather have this set amount right now as opposed to possibly more later on. I mean, sometimes the insurance company makes the decision and they deny liability. They'll say, Here, here's $1,000, you know, go be about your business. You know, in those cases, I get it. You have no choice, but it just really depends on how the firm is run and what the metrics show and really, you know, how the clients rate their experience with the firm. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more with that. And, you know, one thing you kind of touched on was the, the delivery side, the operations, the training. And it seems like the pre-lit have more, I would say, technician, like base level, probably lower labor, just being transparent with the audience costs, uh, those paraprofessionals. And, and um, it seems like the litigating, that's where you get into, hey, you got your high dollar attorneys, your rain, you know, that are, that are getting maximum value. How does, how does the delivery side look on a, and on a, on a litigating side of, of a firm? What, what's it composed of? What? What makes it tick or uh, the core components that you think? Now, what works for us may not work for everybody, but mm -hmm. what will work for everyone that's out there that's in business is first you have to write it down. If, if you don't have a plan, then you can't follow something. You can't measure your success. You can't you know, review. You can't amend. You can't, you can't do anything because you're just going based on your gut. So step number one is set a goal write down how you're going to get there and what you're going to need to accomplish those things. That's just the uber basic business plan that you can start with and then review it, you know, weekly, what you're doing, how your progress is, how you need to adjust, how you need to change course, because the, the things that you can measure and the things that you can review, that's what matters. Everything else is, is just noise. So it's all about numbers. And I know attorneys hate numbers. You know, most of us didn't, you know, go to math school for you know business, but at the end of the day, if you are running a law firm, you're running a business and you have to run your business just like a business. Um, so when it comes to us and our, our firm, we're set up with a pod system. You know, Every attorney that we have has their own paralegal, has their own administrative assistant, and that team is responsible for you know generating a certain fee revenue and handling a certain number of cases. We're very big on automation, and AI, 
workflows, you know, things to automate so many processes that take the human element out of it. You know, simple things where mail gets scanned in, the document gets named a certain way based upon the first few words within the page. And based on that, then gets uploaded to a certain folder or a doc or a file and then a notification goes to the correct person. I mean, just simple things that we have the ability with Microsoft to build in workflows and automation that really make things more efficient.